It's wonderful to have everybody here. I, I, on a purely selfish basis, uh, as I watched uh, both of my daughters uh, give toasts for my third, uh, I thought, wow, it's a good thing they all look like their mom. <laughs> I did good, I chose well. Michelle, when she was turning 18 years old, would be the first one to head to college and or whatever else. Um, I was leaning in heavy for uh, what are you gonna do next? What are you gonna do next? What are you gonna do next? And I knew she wasn't too excited to head straight to college. And so within weeks at the end of the school year, she said, I joined a youth ministry group. Now, if she said anything else, I was ready to jump all over it. But she, how do you look at your kid who says, I'm gonna join a youth ministry group and say, that's a bad idea. <laughs> so she went up to Yakima and uh, I really hadn't learned this until last night when I was looking, for the pic uh, looking through pictures that uh, Michelle at the age of 18 uh, went up to Yakima to join Reach, but in very short order began poaching a 16 year old boy. <laughs> Jake and I met in seminary, and uh, I, I spent most of my time getting to know him there. And over the course of that time, we became really good friends. And Michelle, isn't she gorgeous today? You know, if you know Jacob, you might kind of agree with this. So the first thing is, he can be an incredibly lazy man. Case in point, right after he left seminary, you know, a place where you're supposed to work hard and pray hard and, you know, study hard, he went into government engineering, so. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, when Jake has his heart set on something or someone, he can be one of the most passionate and dedicated people that I know. And I think today um, it's just great evidence of that. They began dating uh, we got to know Jake a lot more and I, I do have to say uh, to anyone who already knows the both of them uh, tell me if you disagree but they are two peas in a pod uh, but from the standpoint of sort of a personality match uh, I, I've never quite seen two come together uh, as they have. I want to address the family of the bride, mostly. Jake's already, our family uh, knows that Michelle's getting a real raw deal already. Uh, I've known Jake since his childhood. He was a little kid when I first met him. He's your typical little brother. He's mouthy. He's a know-it-all. 
He's annoying. Testify, testify. And he's smug, never more smug than he has been today, but definitely smug. So somehow he harnessed his superpower and he wooed Michelle. I'm real sorry you guys ended up with him. It's a tough break. As beautiful as your family is, it's one degree uglier now. Sorry, Jake. <laughs> Michelle was my first best friend. Our parents always told us our siblings should be our best friends because they're the only ones we can really count on for a lifetime. They really like to repeat that over and over again, even when we really weren't getting along. And she did teach me my first lesson about loyalty because she threatened to beat up the kid that was bullying me in elementary school. She said, who was it? I'll push him up against the fence. And I was like, no, please, please, leave him alone. Don't do that. Michelle was always, when I was a kid, which she still is, she was always my funny, outgoing, spunky older sister. I only dreamed of someday being like, um, and I know that God has his perfect timing, but I will admit that I called this one a long time ago. A long time ago. We all did. It did, I will admit that it threw me off a little bit when you joined the seminary, and I was like, oh, gosh, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Like, maybe I saw something they didn't, but don't worry. God's will has his perfect timing. Here we are again today. I'm thankful for God's perfect timing in your lives. I could never forget the way you look at me.